Hello, BookTube. I have a tag for you on Tag Tuesday, even though it's Demolition Day uh, here at Hyde Cottage. <laughs> the, the, the sleepy peace and quiet of Hyde Cottage has been rudely shattered by construction that started, oh, I don't know, back in, in the immediate aftermath of Agincourt and seems to be going on forever. Uh, it's growing instead of shrinking. Uh, but I have retreated to the confines of my little book room. <laughs> I'm surrounded by books with an old, very old bed a little AC unit that does just fine for a little space like this. You might be able to hear it whirring in the background. I have Stella Luna, the, the little bat hanging, <laughs> roosting on a nail off the off the door. I have my portrait of Mole from uh, uh, Wind in the Willows. I have a portrait of Erasmus and Samuel Adams. Uh, and I've got lots of, lots and lots of, I've got Wi-Fi in this room. I've got a plug for my various things. So, Videos can commence, I think. If I can be hear, heard over the AC unit and the, the thunderous sound of street noise, then I think videos can commence, no matter what. Uh, I don't think there'll be any work sounds. But I wanted to do a tag, uh, and I, I came across it because I was tagged in it. Uh, it's from uh, MJ at Reading This Life, whose channel I have seen served up to me by the YouTube algorithm gods many, many times without actually watching. I don't know why. I watched the video, this this tag video in which I'm tagged, and then I watched a whole bunch of other of her videos, and they're wonderful. So I was missing out on a treat. I will leave a link. You should all go and subscribe. Uh, the the tag is the 2022 Summer Book Bay tag. It's a very summery tag, <laughs> uh, which you know is going to cause problems, and the problems are going to be taxonomical, and we get to them right away, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, number problem number one is summer is a sexy time of year. It should only be said by a human being whose sense of smell is largely vestigial. <laughs> My sense of smell is not largely vestigial. It's actually a marvel of the modern world. And believe you me, there's nothing sexy about summer <laughs> from a smell point of view when it comes to humans. Uh, but uh, for the purposes of the tag, we'll, we'll go with it. Uh, do you think reading is sexy? Share your thoughts. <laughs> and, uh, the simple answer to the question is no, I don't think reading is sexy. But there's a broader answer, and it gets at the taxonomical problems that we were talking about, the clade problems. You know who's the only thing that thinks reading is sexy? It's a a sort of a skulking, pasty-faced, semi-human creature called an introvert. <laughs> Introverts think reading is sexy. They write whole books about it. It's not, and neither are they. <laughs> now, I'm not saying uh, that we should round them up and put them in pens and use them for meat. I'm not saying it. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I'm perfectly willing, in fact, to grant them almost as many rights as we would grant to an actual human. <laughs> They seem uncannily human-like at times. <laughs> but they're the only people who think reading is sexy. Reading is not sexy. <laughs> no. <laughs> God help us. Uh, and that's not the only time that introverts are going to rear their uh, their nerdy little Coke bottle glasses heads in this tag. Uh, problem number two is random meetings. Uh, what fictional characters uh, or character or author would you enjoy meeting at a backyard party slash cookout? That's not the problem right there, because if you're sending this tag out to introverts, well, introverts don't go to backyard parties or cookouts, or if you drag one there, they feel like they're being tortured. <laughs> backyard parties are wonderful. Backyard cookouts are wonderful. They are wonderful things to go to. I used to love them. Absolutely love them. <laughs> and a lot of times I was invited to backyard parties and cookouts for one particular reason. The same reason that I've been invited to many outdoor weddings. And it was summed up by usually the father involved who would who would say it in not very kind tones and say, you're not really being invited for any other reason except to take care of the dogs. I want you to control the dogs. There are going to be a few of them here. I don't want them misbehaving. I don't want them getting away. I don't want them doing anything wrong. I want you just keep them in your orbit and under your control. And I gladly agreed. Uh, I had an old friend once a long, long time ago at a, at a uh, backyard cookout. Uh, we, we were talking ahead of time, and I said, you know, 
I would think so and so, her her grandfather who was throwing the the, uh, the party. I would think that he would be a little more grateful. I mean, he he did invite me, but it was very grudging. He just he invited me just so that I could take care of the dogs, so that I could control them, so they wouldn't be inconveniencing any house guests. You'd think he'd be happy to have me, just as a person instead of for that one function. I mean, what could he have against me? And my friend paused for a long minute, and I thought, what's the matter? <laughs> what? It sounds like you want to say something, but you don't feel like you should. And she, she eventually said, honey, do you have any idea how much you eat at a backyard party, at a cookout? Do you have any idea how much food you alone eat? such a party it's not that's the reason he doesn't want you to come over it's not because he thinks just you're going to control the dogs and doesn't like you otherwise it's that he has to double the food bill for the party if you're going to show, show up <laughs> i did not realized that uh, but i've been to many many of these things and uh i don't go anymore uh you know i i I don't go anymore to such things. I haven't been invited in years, but I something about the whole momentum and shape of my outside life has largely changed in the last three or four years alone. So I, I wouldn't do that anymore, but I have many, many fond memories. Uh, and the person that I would want to meet there, the first name that came to mind, is an author, a real person, Marjorie Heffern, uh, uh, who's no longer alive. This is the sort of morbid take that, that some of these questions tend to turn for me. I, I would love to be at a, a, a happy, laughing, crowded cookout and just see through the crowd that there she was with that, that dumb, utterly infectious laugh of hers and that she wasn't really gone. And I could make my way through the crowd and we could talk about the American Revolution until the party was over. That's never going to be possible again, but I can recommend her book on Louisa Adams, her biography of Louisa Adams. Unfinished at the time of her death, but still really good. Uh, so I'm going to say Marjorie Heffern, and we'll move on to happier questions. Uh, question number three is opposites attract, like introverts and normal people. Uh, uh, name two characters from different books slash genres you would love to see coupled in a story. Uh, and I, for this question, I didn't so much think of individual characters as types of characters because I've recently, I don't remember what it was, but recently something, something brought to my mind again, Mordant's Need, which is a two volume fantasy series by Stephen R. Donaldson, the fantasy author, Stephen R. Donaldson. Uh, the first book is called The Mirror of Her Dreams and the second book is called A Man Rides Through. And they're big books. Both of them are. It's a, it's a huge, it's only two volumes. What, what, the booktube and Goodreads communities insist on calling duologies, even though that's an operation that you don't really want to have without anesthesia and not really anything bookish. Uh, it, it's a two-volume series, and I don't know what brought it to my mind. I would never have the hardcovers of Morden's Need again. Never in a million years. They take up way too much space. I might grab the, paper, the mass market paperbacks if I saw them. They had really neat Michael Whelan covers. Uh, but they're creepy books. They're weird and creepy books. Uh, as once you take a step back from it, so much of what Stephen R. Donaldson wrote is creepy in a sexual way. Uh, the, the fantasy land in the, in the series is a place, it's again quasi-medieval, much like the land in Donaldson's Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever. And it's a place where the magic is all based on mirrors, which are very rare and used as uh, means of magic in this fantasy world. They aren't common like they are in our world. That's a, a sort of a gimmick that Donaldson does minds to much greater effect in Thomas Covenant, where Covenant has a white gold wedding ring, but white gold is unknown in the land and is a source of immense magic power, something common in our world. Uh, same thing is true in Morden's Need, uh, and the heroine is a, a mousy young woman who lives in our world. She lives in the normal contemporary world. And she hears horns trilling through one of the mirrors in her apartment. Wonderful moment. Wonderfully done. And eventually ends up going through that mirror into this fantasy land where she meets a young boy who they, they eventually fall in love in the course of the book. It's torturously slow. But that's not the creepy thing. 
the creepy thing is the older guy. There's an older guy with a weird kind of sexual fascination slash possession slash domination of that mousy female character that anybody who's read Thomas Covenant will immediately think of Thomas Covenant himself and first Lena, then Elena. It's, it's, there's a way in which this author is exorcising some very, very unhealthy sexual stuff of his own in his books in a, in a very, you know, penthouse forum kind of way that, anyway, something made me think of that dynamic. And I was wondering, would I want to read Morden's Need again? Would I do that? I probably will read those two books one more time uh, before I reach the age of 30. So I've got a little bit of time. Uh, but the, the young woman in our world is summoned, much like in Thomas Covenant, she is summoned to this fantasy land mistakenly. The, the person that these, these magic mirrors in this other world can reach into other dimensions. They can reach into other worlds. And the, the, uh, the fantasy land in question is in danger. And the, the uh, wizards, the mirror wizards, want to summon a champion. And the champion they summon, that they want to summon, is from a science fiction world. He is a giant armored being with a laser gun. He's in an atmospheric suit. They, you, they can't even see his face. And I was thinking of that. I was thinking, uh, oh, wait, is that why I was thinking of it? Because of Lightyear? Because of the movie Lightyear? The, the, the new movie Lightyear is, is the movie from which Buzz Lightyear comes, the toy, is based on in Toy Story. Maybe that was it. Wondering, I, I started wondering what that, that science fiction hero's world was like, what his story was. And that immediately, when I saw this prompt, I thought, that's what I would want. I'd want a science fiction character to go to a fantasy world. And that's happened many times. I've read many fantasy novels that were like that. But uh, usually it involves stripping the science fiction character of their science fiction accoutrements. They don't have a tricorder anymore. They don't have a laser anymore. They, they have knowledge. They have some knowledge instead, but that's all. Uh, I guess what, I, what I'd like is kind of to know that character's story. I'm sure there's fan fiction about it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've got a reread of Morton's Need coming up in the rest of 2022. Uh, but that's what I'm going to say. A science fiction story, a science fiction character in a fantasy story. Uh, then uh, prompt number four is get outside. If the wall demolition here continues apace, I will be outside in very little time. I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, do you enjoy reading outdoors? No, I do not enjoy reading outdoors. I've done a huge amount of it because when I was traveling... I had my dogs, and I also had a, a bunch of books, and that's all I did was talk to the dogs and read books. <laughs> that's all I did. So if I was out on the open water or if I was, you know, camping or hiking somewhere in some godforsaken piece of wilderness where I was 100, 200, 300 miles away from the next human being, you read. Uh, I very seldom had any kind of shelter. I very seldom brought any kind of tarp or tent. Talk about wasted space in a backpack. I just didn't do it. Uh, so I would be outside when I was reading, but I don't prefer it. And nowadays, no, <laughs> no. Not only because if I were to find a nice shady spot under a tree, there are plenty of those within two minutes walk of where I am, I would be surrounded by dogs in no time. There would be no peace from them, and I wouldn't want any peace from them. But also, you know, that's where bugs are, and that's where the sun is. The, the, the sun and, and, and delicate pink Irish skin do not get along <laughs> at all, no. No, I do not read outdoors unless I have to. Uh, prompt number five is preferences matter. What do you think for the perfect outdoor reading, physical or ebook? Well, of course. Uh, do I have them here? Yes. Of course, it's ebooks, right? Uh, because printed books are are a pain in the neck to lug around, and iPads can't compete with the sun. What you want is e ink. Which is good anywhere, and this this is nothing. It weighs nothing at all. It weighs you know two two coins. It's about what this weighs. It's nice and durable. The charge will last for several weeks. It has hundreds of books on it by now. I think this device has 560 books on it. So of course I would take this. And 
This is the uh, the Kindle Paperwhite, the uh, one of the late, not the latest edition, but the one right before it, the 2019, I think this is. And as you can see, it has a flat surface, so the bezels are not raised off the screen, which means there's nowhere for gunk to go on this thing. It's just a slate of plastic. That's all. Uh, so I would of course bring that. That's that would be my preference. That's usually my preference. Although if I'm indoors and nice and comfortable, I will often read on the iPad. Uh, let's see here. Prompt number six is recommend a summertime read. Uh, I have two that I want to recommend. One is something that I've recommended on this channel a few times, but it's been a while. And that's a little novel by Diane Highbridge. I wonder if I have it near me here. I don't have any idea what the topography is from this reading point. Well, it doesn't matter. It's called A Much Younger Man. It's about 20 years old. It's a slim novel, but I think pretty powerful. About a woman on the doorstep of, of middle age who... She's not old by any means, but she... She experiences an erotic fixation with a much younger man, with a boy who's barely out of his teens. And it develops not in terms of, you know, are you trying to seduce me, <laughs> Mrs. Robinson, but into an actual relationship that surprises both of them with its depth, with its reality. Uh, it, it, the novel, the cover is, you know, a sensuous cover of uh, two people embracing. And there, the carnal element definitely is the fuel for the rocket. But really, it's an all about falling in love and how that can happen anywhere. And you just have to take the consequences as they come. Uh, so I don't know what made me think of it as a summer novel, except maybe that it it's, has a summery kind of cover. I don't know. I think it's out of print now. I don't know what the new cover would look like. But the cover I saw, uh, it's well worth your time. And and the cover I had was a kind of summery. I wish that I, could, that I had it here, but I don't think it's within reach. Uh, but I also want to recommend uh, a much more typical sun, summer fair, and that is the Gray Man series by Mark Greeny. Uh, start with book one uh, of a, a man who has, who's been cut loose, he's been trained by the American elite uh, spook forces, but cut loose from them and, and contracts on his own. And they're very good popcorny action adventure novels. There's a lot of them now. They're terrifically done. I encountered Mark Greeny. I learned about him backwards. Although I imagine it's the way a lot of people have lear learned about him back 10 years ago. He was one of the authors who was given the job of continuing the Tom Clancy literary estate. Continuing those those big brick novels. And I saw some of them and thought, well, okay, Clancy's been roasting in hell for years now. So his name might be on this book, but he had not the slightest input on it. This is a novel by this guy named Mark Greeny, or Mark Barterworth, or whoever it is, I wonder what it's like. Just because it has Tom Clancy's name on it, it, Tom Clancy had nothing to do with this book. So I wonder what the book is like. And uh, I tried it. I forget the name of a great big doorstop of a Clancy book that I tried that was a Mark Greeny novel and loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was the best book I've ever read, as I joked at the time. It was the best book I've ever read with Tom Clancy's name on the cover. Uh... And so I was automatically curious when I saw that Mark Greeny wrote his own books. And boy, oh boy, the Gray Man series does not disappoint. It's terrific. Uh, then question number seven is, what is your favorite summertime beverage? Summertime, wintertime, whatever time. I drink only three things. Water, Tropicana, pure premium, orange juice, no pulp. If it has pulp, I'll spit it against the wall. And cheap red wine. Chateau Thames and Bankman. <laughs> Pomeroy's Plonk. That's it. Those are the only things I drink. Uh, I have a huge amount of water every day. A Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice only if I can if I can get it. I don't do grocery runs anymore, so I don't always have that. And wine used to be a barrel full every night, but now no. Now only when it's a, a special occasion. Now only when I have uh, company, or I am company somewhere else. <laughs> then then break out the wine absolutely, but otherwise no. So water would be my summertime beverage. Uh, question number eight is, where is your favorite vacation slash holiday destination? Uh, for me, for the longest time, whenever I was in the country, that destination was either Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard. Those of you who might not know your Massachusetts geography, Massachusetts is a rectangle, but it has a fish hook extending into the Atlantic, and that fish hook is Cape Cod. And right off the fish hook is an island called Martha's Vineyard. And further out, there's an island called Nantucket. Uh, when I wasn't summering on the vineyard, 
which I did many, many times. I also wintered, wintered on the vineyard a few times. When I wasn't doing that, I was my summer destination was Cape Cod, and specifically the very tip of the fish hook, a town called uh, Provincetown. Uh, associated with which I have many fond memories <laughs> that are not suitable for repeating on this channel. Provincetown was, and I imagine still is, a lot of fun. The, I had a particular bolt hole up two flights of stairs, uh, a couple of back rooms and a little, a little functional uh, bathroom, not really a habitable space uh, to live in as an apartment. Didn't really have a kitchen or stove or anything like that. But I didn't need that. I ate out all the time, and so did my dogs with me. So uh, I would return to that bolt hole many seasons in a row. Uh, and God only knows, that bolt hole's probably gone by now, but if it still exists, I'm sure it has a little kitchenette. And I'm sure that in the summer season, it's 3500 a month, 3500 a week. <laughs> uh, so I, it's inaccessible to me now, even if it still exists. But that was, for the longest time, my summer vacation destination. Not anywhere else. All the more exotic places were places that I traveled to. I wasn't vacationing there. I was traveling to them, or through them for long periods of time with no intention of coming back like a snapped rubber band. Vacationing is something completely different. I usually did that on the Cape or the Vineyard. Uh, now, not so much. <laughs> now, now I would, I would be marvelously overawed for a vacation spot if I could maybe vacation for a little while in my own living room. I can't. And who knows when I'll be able to. <laughs> but that's a dream destination. Someday. I would like to vacation in my own living room. Uh, question number nine is, recommend a book set on a unique or exotic location here. I think of a book by John Maxtone uh, Graham called The Only Way to Cross, which is a book about luxury liners. So it's a destination that was also a, a transportation, and it's a destination that's largely gone. In fact, almost entirely gone. You can still cruise across the Atlantic. And you can do it in very high style. You'd be crazy to. It's a petri dish for whatever comes after COVID. But you can still do it. And there are YouTube channels devoted to it. To tips on where to stay and how to get the most out of it. How, not, how to avoid stomach issues, <laughs> viral enteritis and whatnot. Uh, but The Only Way to Cross is an older book. It's like 40 years old. And it's a history of luxury liners back when they were the only way that you could go from New York to London. And it's really good. It's a really enjoyable book. It's, a, it's a, a step back into the past to a kind of crossing that symbolically, anyway, ended with the sinking of the Titanic. Uh, it lasted longer than that. And you can still do it. I'm sure that you could still do some sort of very highfalutin, very exclusive luxury crossing of the Atlantic that isn't a cruise ship that's just thousands of people decked on top of each other. That isn't that that's far closer to the Gilded Age of crossing. I'm sure that that is still possible to do. And there are plenty of private yachts that do that all the time, that stay in the, on the ocean and barely ever make land call. Uh, then prompt number 10 is, <laughs> is, is bound to set the teeth on edge of any of the introverts who are doing this tag. Have you ever asked a total stranger what they are reading or have given a book recommendation to a stranger in person? If yes, do you remember what it was? <laughs> I could just hear all the introverts scrunching up on the inside. <laughs> I have done this many, many, many times. Uh, I approach strangers all the time to talk to them about anything <laughs> at all. And there's never an adverse reaction. It's another canine trait. No one is ever sorry for that, even introverts. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dog thing. They don't mind when I do it. No one's ever minded when I do it. I did it just the other day. Uh, I, I was passing a young woman who was who had out her cell phone. It was one of those huge uh, iPhone 12 or 13 X Max iPhones that are just gigantic. They're almost the size of an iPad mini. And I just said, oh my, look at that. Now, I've been seriously thinking about a phone this big, but I've got a bunch of questions for you, and I just fired them off. What are you going to do? Kill me? <laughs> Even in America? <laughs> but the, the question... Uh, have you ever made a recommendation for a stranger? And if so, do you remember when it was? Well, that used to be my job. I, I worked the information desk of a big, bustling retail bookstore before the internet. 
so I was the internet for books. And I got, I recommended books to strangers all the time in that job. That's all that I ever did. From noon to two, we had a lunch rush. We just bombarded with customers. The store would fill up so that you would barely walk across the floor. And there would be lines at the information desk. When it wasn't the lunch rush, those crowds would go away. There would still be customers in the store. But uh, when I didn't have those, those lines to amuse me, I would just walk away from the information desk and wander around the store. I'd just walk up to people. What you doing? <laughs> What's that? What made you pick that? Oh, tell me about it. What are you looking for? Oh, it's for a relative. What are they like? Well, you say you don't know, but let's, let's see if we can figure it out. We'll find the perfect thing. I guarantee you, when I'm done figuring out what it is your cousin wants, in a week you're going to come back here and you're going to tell me, look, I didn't think I would be coming back in here, but he hasn't stopped raving about it, so I thought I would tell you you were right. I've had many, many, I had many, many, many customers do that. My Deb used to say, oh no, don't tell him that, it'll make him worse. <laughs> and so yes, I've done this many, many times, more times than I can count. And you wouldn't be free of it. No one is safe in this neighborhood. Frida and I are very much the same. We are extremely extroverted. We walk right up to people and ask them what their business is. What are you doing? I ask people all the time, do you read for pleasure? What's the last thing you read? If I see somebody with a book, oh my God. I consider that a, a spoken invitation <laughs> for me to talk to them. Uh, then, uh, let's see here. Question number 11 is recommend a, a new book bay booktuber under 100 subscribers. And here, uh, I would never trust my memory. So I just went to that wretched hive of scum and villainy <laughs> known as the booktube newbie tag. I just looked up the booktube newbie tag and had a whale of a time watching a bunch of channels. Now, two of the people that I want to recommend, I found that way. One is the Hebridean Reader. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. And the other is Ink and Fig. They're both fantastic. Absolute naturals. I hope they stick around and do this forever. But the third person that I want to recommend, I didn't find through the book newbie tag. I already knew that she started the channel. And that is Heather Gregg. Uh, finally, at long last, after watching and thinking about it for so long, has a booktube channel of her own, and it's every bit as wonderful as I hoped it would be. I'll leave links to all three of these down below. It's, uh, it, the, they are well worth your time to subscribe to and watch. I can tell. No idea how many videos you'll get, but uh, it'll always be a pleasure to see them in your feed. Uh, and the, the final prompt for the 2022 Summer Bay book tag is to name three booktube bays to do this tag. And I want to tag the three people I just named, the three people I've linked to. I don't know, some some new booktubers don't do tags. Uh, or they start off their channel saying that. I never know how hard and fast that is. Sometimes I think new booktubers say that because they, they know they're not going to get tagged and they're trying to, you know, I you can't fire me, I quit, that kind of thing. But but one way or another, if any of these three people do tags, I'd love to hear their answers. So so that is the 2022 Summer Bay book tag, uh, which I saw on the on uh, reading this life and loved. And I'm sure that all those introverts out there saw these questions and thought what they always think. <sighs> they thought, or maybe said out loud, the number one line of dialogue that is absolutely universal for all introverts everywhere. And what is that line of dialogue? Do I have to? <laughs> These people. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with them. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's your tag for Tag Tuesday. I'm going to wrap this up, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.